This video introduces the second big idea of calculus, and that is the idea of area. The main topic of this video is, uh, by the end of it, you should be able to write definite integrals to represent the area under a curve. Uh, we haven't talked about these things before, but that's the point of the video. I mentioned this thing called a definite integral, and you're probably like, what the heck is that, Mr. DRAM? Seriously. Well, here's what a definite integral is. We start with this elongated S thing, and it's called the integral. And in calculus, we integrate functions. So it's going to be the integral of f of x dx. And so this is how we say it, the integral of f of x dx. And the thing that makes it a definite integral is that there are limits of integration. Um, in this case, from x equals a to x equals b. So the way that we read this is the integral of f of x dx from x equals a, whoa, a little scribbly there, x equals a to x, no, wrong letter, x equals b. Just to highlight a few things, remember that the thing that makes this a definite integral is that there are limits of integration. Um, we'll talk about indefinite integrals in a, in a different section. Um, and the second thing is that this is a good integral. Um, and the reason that it's a good integral is because everything matches. Um, we have a function of x, we're integrating with respect to dx, and our limits are x equals a and x equals b. Um, if, n if something doesn't match, like if we're going from y to y of f of x d u, then something's wrong and we can't actually do that integral. The next really important thing is that this expression has meaning. And the meaning of this expression is the following. And here's the meaning. This integral thing means the accumulation, and I sort of did this color-coded, so like this symbol means accumulation and it also means integral. Um, so the symbol means the accumulation of signed area, okay, we'll talk about that, what that means in a second, between f of x, which is the function, and the x-axis. Uh, this is always implied uh, whenever you're doing an integral. Uh, and then again, we're going between x equals b and x, or x equals a and x equals b. Um, the reason that I had to throw in this thing about signed area is that because area technically is always a positive thing. However, when we do integrals, we will encounter area, or Huh. We'll, we'll encounter areas huh, that will be either positive or negative depending upon how we're doing the integral. Here's a great example to figure out what this all means. Here is a function. It looks like this. Um, and here's going to be our x equals a, here's x equals b. Um, and I guess I'll color code the function just for you. There we go. There is our function, f. And so our integral, which was the integral from x equals a to x equals b of f of x dx, I'm going to throw the x equals back in here. Um, and so this integral means the accumulation of signed area between the function f of x and the x-axis. So here's what that looks like on a graph. Here's f of x, and here's the x-axis, and it's the area, quote-unquote, under the curve. So we have this area here, we have this area here, and we have this area here all the way to x equals b. Um, but remember that word, and that word was signed. There was signed area. And it's not like you went around and asked all the area for its autograph. Get it? Like signed area? No? Fine, never mind. Um, and so we have to distinguish between area that lies above the x-axis and area that lies below the x-axis. And here's some more area that lies above the x-axis. And so the way we do this is that, well, any area that lies above the x-axis is positive area. And any area that lies below the x-axis over here is negative area. And I made a really weird alien face uh, by accident. Hope you enjoy it. And so we have that idea to think about as the integral. Here's another way to think about the integral. Um, so here's our integral from x equals a to x equals b of f of x dx. Um, and now, uh, the other way to think about it is, okay, here's our function. Um, I'm going to do a different function this time. Here's f, here's a, here's b. And now I'm going to think about this as an actual, like, the integral actually doing something. 
So what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at just the f of x dx. And if I notice, this is like multiplication, right? There's like a multiply sign there. Don't think product rule or anything. This is just area. So like f of x, what does that mean on the graph? Well, f of x is like the height. If I choose an x value here, f of x is the actual, the distance, the physical distance from the x-axis to the function. So this is like height. And then there's the dx. And remember, dx is like a small change in x. And so if we like zoom in here, we have a little dx here in blue. And if I multiply those, guess what? I'm going to get a very small rectangle. Oh, huh, that's cool. Because this dx is like length. And guess what? If I multiply height times length, I'm going to get an area. OK, specifically a rectangle. Um, but dx is infinitesimally small. And so this is like an infinitesimally small, small, small rectangle okay, um, between the x-axis and f. But then there's this integral thing. And the integral thing means that I add them all up. Add up all of the, rec all the little rectangles from, from between x equals a and x equals b. So hopefully that was an in, like a different way to picture the integral, um, more of like an actual process, like you find a rectangle and then you add them all up between a and b. Next jibber jabber, let's actually do some integrals. Just kidding, we have to talk about the properties of integrals first. The most basic property is that if I have the sum or difference of two functions that I'm integrating, so if I have two functions f of x and g of x, and I'm integrating both of them together, uh, notice that I'm not you don't have to write parentheses around both things, okay? Whenever you have an integral sign and a dx, there are implied parentheses um, right after the integral and right before the dx. But this property is very easy because what I can do, just like derivatives, is split this up into two separate integrals. The integral from a to b of just f of x dx, and then I'll either add that or subtract it to, okay, that carries through, the integral from a to b of g of x dx. The next property is not a property. Do not ever, ever do this. It's just like uh, when you do the product rule wrong and you kill kittens. Here is a not property. Okay, It's not a property. Don't ever do this. Um, integral from a to b of f of x times g of x. And the temptation here is to just multiply the two integrals. Okay, like the integral from a to b of f of x dx times the integral from a to b of g of x dx. Do not ever do this. These are not equal. You will kill kittens and they will be sad. Here are some other true properties of integrals. Let's say that I'm integrating again from a to b of f of x dx. And now um, here's a picture to go along with this one. So here's uh, A and here's B, and because I'm going from A to B, that means that I'm integrating this way along the x-axis. And so as I go along, I'm adding up more and more area, okay? What if, just for kicks, we decide to integrate backwards? Like, you know, I don't know. We'll just do it anyway. Okay, well, if we integrate backwards, the way that we write it is we're now going from B to A. And so we write it as b to a. And guess what? It's still the same function, f of x dx. But think about it this way. When we're integrating forwards, our dx's are positive because we're taking positive changes in x. However, when we're integrating backwards, our dx's are now negative. Okay? And that's the only difference is that when we're integrating from right to left, that the integrals is now negative. So the property here is that if you switch the limits, you must make the integral negative. There's a relationship of a negative there if you switch the limits. Another graphical um, property is that if you have the integral from a to c of f of x dx, um, and now what we're going to say is that there's some number, like there's a number b between a and c. Okay, and the idea here is that I'm going to split up one integral into two separate integrals. And so the integral from a to c could be thought of as the integral from a to b of f of x dx plus the integral from b to c 
of f of x dx. Uh, and here's a picture to go along with that. And I totally wasn't talking when I drew that picture. Great. Good job, Mr. DRAM. Well, here's what the picture said. Here's our function from a to c. And the integral from a to c is just this area, okay, from a to c. Well, I can think about it geometrically as just splitting up the region into two separate regions, from a to b, and doing that area separately, and then just adding it from b to c, and doing that area separately. Easy. The last property is very important. Um, it's our constant multiplier property. So if we have the integral from x equals a to x equals b of k times f of x dx, uh, and here k is a constant, like in Russia, we have constants. Uh, what you can do with that constant is just like with derivatives, uh, the integral is a semi-permeable membrane for constants, and you see you can pull the constant out. Uh, and the way we would, we would rewrite this is k constant times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And so you would just find this integral first and then just multiply it by the constant at the end. Now we can do some basic integrals and see if we actually understand what's going on. All right, here we go. The simplest but kind of tricky integral is the integral from like, I don't know, we'll go from 0 to 4 of just dx. <laughs> Tricked ya! No, seriously though, this is an actual integral. Um, notice here that there's an invisible 1 here, and so the function that we're integrating is actually f of x equals 1. Draw a graph. Do to do, here's your graph, here's 1. So there's our function, and we're integrating from 0 to 4. Here's 0, here's 4, and so it's this area, and it's a rectangle, so it's 4 times 1, so the area is 4. Easy. Here's another one, 0 to, or I guess we could go from like 2, whoa, settle down, 2 to 6 of 8 dx. Same idea, our picture here will be y equals 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're going to go from 2 to 6, and guess what, this is another rectangle, um, so this length is 4, this is 8, and so the area under this curve is just 32. Okay, sometimes integrals are really easy because they're easy geometric shapes, and that's the point of this video is to show you that sometimes integrals are just easy geometric shapes. Let's do a trickier one. Okay, for this one, you have to draw a picture, again, just like with the others. So here's the line y equals x, and we're going from negative 2 to 6. Whoa, settle down. All right, and notice here that between negative 2 and 0, we've got some negative area here. And then between 0 and 6, we've got some positive area here. It's like a really offset bow tie, I guess. Um, can you use geometry for this one? You bet you can. These are both triangles. So we're going to have one half base, which is 2, and the height, because it's y equals x, this height is also 2. But... See how it lies below the x-axis? You can think of that as a negative height, and so it's a negative 2 for the height. Then we have the red triangle, and this has a base of 6, because we're going from 0 to 6. And the height is also 6, because it's y equals 6. It's y equals f of x. Sorry, y equals x, and x equals 6. So we have 6 times 6. Now I add them up, um, so I'm going to get negative 2 plus, what is this, 3 times 6, which is like 18. So my answer is 16. Da, 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 da. So this is 16. Done. You do have to be a little bit clever sometimes. We do know how to integrate the integral from negative 5 to 5. I'll wait for it. The square root of 25 minus x squared. Whoa! What is that? Well, if you think about it, this is the equation for a circle, and specifically a semicircle with radius 5 because it's 25 squared is 25. So here's the picture, and this is from negative 5 to 5, and so guess what? It's a semicircle, and you know the area of a circle is a equals pi r squared. The radius here is just 5, r equals 5, and so it's 25 pi, except it's half, because it's only the positive square root. And so this answer is simply not sad. It's happy. It's 25 pi divided by 2. See how fast you did that with geometry. So nice. That's basically it in terms of integral as area. Um, hey, guess what? When I say integral, you're going to think area is going to be fun. Uh, for the record, there are lots of functions, like the integral from a to b of sine of x dx, 
oh my gosh, that we don't know how to do yet, and that's okay. And for the majority of these types, actually the majority of integrals that you do, there will actually be an equation that you will use rather than using geometry. But this is, the integral is always area, and you can interpret it as that.